episode of Aussie Tech Ed. It's 483 and it's the 14th of April 2016. How are you doing? You can catch us on the Facebook. We try to Facebook live stream tonight, but uh, Australian bandwidth, even with cable, just, just can't do it. It just, just gets clogged up everywhere. You just can't do it. It's so disappointing. Uh, you can do a Facebook Live from your phone, but once you start trying to do too many things like hook up with other people on Skype and maybe stream it out to the Facebook, oh yeah, it just crashes. But anyway, you can find the Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Eds and tune in radio. Tune in to us, search for Aussie Tech Eds or the Aussie Tech Radio, which is a 24-7 wall-to-wall, back-to-back Aussie and uh, New Zealand tech podcast. And uh, you can get some instructions or listen to it off the web at aussietechradio.com or tune in radio app on your favorite device search for aussie tech radio and see the video of the show at youtube.com forward slash aussie tech Ed. we are brought to you by athwebhosting.com.au you know the deal with them uh, shared hosting services uh, fairly competitive prices and stable australian servers so uh, jump on board all right got a bit got a few more of those uh the uh plugs to do throughout the show and i was just going to say good day to our person on the panel but we lost his video uh, so. again this was something different <laughs> so yes it is will but um it is will but we have lost this video We're, as soon as we go to um go to him <laughs> he circles like a little circle, uh, like an eagle it's, it's not like we're having this problem all night or anything no well, that's right that's right <laughs> well what about if we just every time we want to talk to you, we're just gonna look at the circle. Can you <laughs> can you start? And... I, mean, I, I mean, I can do that. That's <laughs> yeah. Start your camera again and see what happens. I just did. It didn't. It didn't help. No. Yeah, okay. They updated. Oh wow! I'm getting major feedback. They updated Skype um, on my last reboot, so right. that helped. That didn't help at all. No, no <laughs> way. All right, well, let's get into some stories, and we're just going to leave Will there because we, we've uh, we tried something new. We did try the Facebook Live, as I said, and uh, it's that it sort of didn't work, did it, Will? It uh, look, we tried to do through Wirecast. Like, yes, we weren't doing it off the video, off the, off off the mobile. We tried it through a video production software, and the production software probably only came out today. So, or, you know, this week. So they're probably ironing a few bugs out there. So, you know, hard road. it's a hard road for early adopters. But we tried it and, uh, yeah, we hit that corrugated part of the road. Then we had to stop. So, okay. That's where we're we going to start, Will. Are you, st- are you still audioing? Um, oh, yeah, yeah but I'm there. getting stupidly insane feedback and I don't know where it's coming from. So we'll just push through this and see how we go. Can you Can you push through or do you want us to... Start the so Skype what? call again. <laughs> Do you want to start the Skype uh, call again? I don't. No, let's just go. It's fine. All right. Now, I think let's... my... Uh... Yeah, radio. Well... Or we could stop. <laughs> <laughs> what we might do is, I don't know, my garage band now is having a bit of a fit. So, <laughs> you can't work it out, can you? You can't work <sighs> it out. So, look, I'm going to stop the garage band because that was a dead set great intro. So, I'm, <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to stop the garage band. Yes, so after that little uh, little interruption, we'll go with the first story of the week. Hello, yeah, okay. It's, um, let's start off with, oh, Gareth Thomas. Now, you might not know this name straight off the top of your head, but he, he did pass away this week. Uh, now, Will, you probably, oh, you, you probably know who he is now. Did you know before you sort of read the story? Or, or what? Um, but he is, uh, he played Blake in Blake 7. Yeah, he sadly passed away. Blake 7 ran from 1978 to 1981 uh, on BBC One. You know, I wasn't born till 81, right? Oh, really? <laughs> but did, did you watch uh, Blake 7? I know of it, like I've heard of it, but I don't think I've ever actually watched it. Oh, you should go and watch it. It's great. It's really good. It's, uh, it, I remember it used to be on. Oh, Friday nights on the ABC, probably around about 9 30, 10 o'clock, something like that. And uh, yeah, I've watched them since. I have watched them probably only, oh, maybe five or six years ago now. But yeah, they're not too bad. He was in the, f- they made three series. Uh, he was in the first two series. And I don't know, must have wanted, he must have wanted more money or something. He didn't get into the final series. Uh, but he did appear as some sort of ghost or something. So, um, but yeah, it was, it was a good show. You go, go on uh, YouTube it. Probably on the YouTube, 
But uh, yeah, it's only 71, so that's no good. No good at all for old Gareth. All right, uh, what else have we got going? It's uh, Border Force swoops on counterfeit resellers. Now, this is a bit of a problem, isn't it? Because uh, remember there was a little story a little while ago about a lady who got electrocuted uh, plugging in a USB phone charger. And uh, this is because she bought a phone charger from overseas somewhere, somewhere a bit dodgy. And, you know, look, I, I got a, uh, I bought a second-hand MacBook Pro. Can you believe that, Will? Second-hand MacBook Pro. You wouldn't do something like that, would you? I can't, you know. I that, did. That's not something you'd do. I wanted it for my black magic. <laughs> and, um, so uh yeah so i i talked to michael about it you know i'm from the aussie max zone and i said oh listen i need a charger for it because it didn't come with a charger and i got on the ebay and i saw these oh, magnetrons whatever they had to be the 80 watt magnetron 2 charges on ebay about 40 bucks i went yeah that's me i'll go down and get one and then i thought about this lady who got electrocuted and so forth and i thought oh, i'll ring michael so i rang michael and i said what do you reckon about these because at the Apple store, they're 130 Well, 130 bucks for a charger. Kidding me. So went to the, uh, rang Michael and he goes, nah, stay away from those ones on eBay. I said, why is that? And he goes, well, he said that they, that they say 80 watt, you know, charger on the box, but there aren't some secondhand dodgy 40 watt charger inside. He said, you won't charge the machine, you waste the money. So anyway, so it looks like there's a, be careful when you're buying these well, things on eBay. Yes and no. I mean, that's, that's true to a point, but not entirely true. Um, if you want to learn more about this and why, and it's not a new thing, it's been happening for a long time. There's a guy on YouTube, um, he's called, his YouTube channel is bigclive.com, um, or you can go to his website at bigclive.com, ironically. Not, not the big Clive, um, not the big Clive P. No, no. Oh, um, and he's a very, very smart man and he is it's very good. Definitely not good. Clive P. Yeah. He's, um, very good at, um, sorry, I'm just adjusting my camera, I realise how far down it was. Um... He's very good at explaining things in a very simple way. Um, he's got a lot of fun stuff on his channel. He does a lot of interesting little things, but he has a couple of um, videos on things like uh, USB power supply faults and mains charger faults and things like that. And he does a very good job at explaining exactly what makes a, Chinese, a dodgy Chinese transformer dodgy right. as opposed to just a cheap transformer that can actually be okay. Right. So, yeah, um, it's really good to check him out. Uh, I've watched, well, I actually have watched just about every one of his videos. Um, he's he's got a, great, great watch and good to listen to and very entertaining and very knowledgeable. Yeah, he's got a few, well, look at it. So see that um, second one down under the multimeter one, the horrific USB power supply yeah, fault? Yeah, this, this one. Yeah, so that one, um, he this actually pulled, pulled apart that Swiss USB charger. Yeah. Because the guy plugged it in and he got a shock from it. Right. And then his USB cord for his phone fell against his water heater and created a spark. Nice. Anyway, so Clive pulls this apart and finds out that there's a direct there's a direct line, basically, because of the, the way the Transformer's designed, from the mains live 240 line all the way to the casing of the USB port. Yeah, right. So you're getting 240 volts straight to the USB port. Good work, Chinese um, crap. <laughs> but then he goes on and shows you some of the other power supplies that are cheap but not nasty. So yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. So what's what's your what's the upshot? Will do you buy the Chinese ones? Yep. Just about every time. And <laughs> good stuff. Ninety ninety five percent of the time, yeah. you won't even know that it's any different. But, as I said, there is, is a noticeable difference. So I'll give you an example. Um, here is a USB phone portable power supply charger thing. Yeah. Right? Seems to do the job. It's got two USB ports rated at, as soon as you read the rating, it's rated at uh, 18,000 milliamp, which is 18 amp hour, which is not even remotely close. Um, you know, it's got a torch on it, so it, it's got that going for it. It's supposed to be... Two, two amp um, USB ports, and it's supposed to have a solar charger. Yeah. So, anyway, I tested the battery, and the battery is lucky to be 800 milliamp. Um, I tested the USB ports, and the output is lucky to be half an amp per port. And I tested the solar panel, and the solar panel is just bright enough 
to make the little blue flashy light coming on say the solar panels does something. <laughs> well, good. But well, at least that something one, works. That one was 10 bucks. All right? Yeah, well. This one here was 15 bucks. This one has an all-aluminium case, was mostly waterproof, um, actually has, well, they're still wrong. They say 30,000 milliamps, um, which isn't true, but it is a 3,000 milliamp pack, which is pretty powerful. That'll charge your phone half a dozen times. Um, it does actually have two true 2-amp USB ports, and after sitting in the sun for two days, it will actually charge off the solar panel. Yeah, right, but it takes two and days. It, it takes two days, but still, if you're somewhere where you don't have power, I mean, you think if your phone lasts two days on a charge hmm. and you can get five charge, four or five charges out of this, then in between charges, this is going to get topped up again. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, it's heavy construction, and this was 15 bucks. So the, the difference is $5 between that one and that one. Hmm. This unit's not really... I mean, you could probably maybe... I don't know. There's probably salvageable components in there, but oh, as a well, unit, not really usable. Chuck it, But this, this unit here, um, you know, for the price, is yeah. a perfectly fine unit. So that's the difference in the Chinese stuff. They, they do do good stuff, and they do cheap and nasty stuff. And the price isn't that different. You've just got to figure out how to distinguish the difference between cheap and nasty and cheap and okay. Yeah. So you bought that, and you said, this is cheap and nasty. I'm going to buy another one. Well, I bought a different one. Hmm. Well, I've that... bought... You know, I've, I've bought a few different things. I've got a... Look, I'll show you. This is what I've been doing since I haven't been podcasting. Over here is a bench full of cheap Chinese gadgets that I'm in the process of reviewing. You've so, rebuilt China. There's a oscilloscope, DIY oscilloscope skip that you have to solder and assemble yourself. Yeah. Um, here's a lithium jump starter, car jump starter. Um, there's a US... A, um, Chinese soldering station with a hot air gun and a soldering iron. Um, there's a workshop power supply. So there's all sorts of stuff over here that I'm in the process of doing reviews on. You got a bit there. You got a bit to do. Have you got some free time? How how is the uh, bub going? No, he's doing well. He um he's been a little painful of a night at the moment, but that's you know part of it. But, uh, that's right. He's you know he's um he's teething and stuff at the moment so he's a little bit grumpy but he's doing pretty well he's had his uh, check up the other day and he's meeting nice. all his milestones and doing everything he's supposed to be doing so. oh yeah good stuff how old is he now? Uh, pretty much six months yeah right yeah okay that's pretty good hey yeah, he's a growing boy now so just, he's, de yeah. he's definitely going to become a uh, I have to show you this <laughs> what is that? this is inside the personal computer which way is my camera? an illustrated introduction in three dimensions Oh, it's a Which book. Means... Oh, pop-ups. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Where would you get that from? This was published in 1985. Um, and it's got pop-up stuff. i got to fix it. Some of the pop-ups aren't working. Yeah. But it's got even um, circuit boards. This memory chip here I've got to take out because it's removable and you can build your own memory chip. Right. It's got... Uh, Got to be gentle with it because things aren't working properly. It's got all about the binary digits and how the binary system works and what a computer is based on. Um, it's got. Come on, pop up. The old floppy drive. It's on the five and a. The old, you know. Yeah, right. That's a five floppy. and a quarter. Five and a quarter, and you open it up. And it's oh, got the disc nice. inside. Shows you what it looks like. Yeah, that's uh, cool, Will. That's good. Inside there shows you what the heads are do, oh. and then you go over the page. Can you, can you put that? Can you put that little drive? So for those on the audio, I'm sorry, it's very visual, I know. But Will's got this book. It's a pop-up book, and he opens up the pages, and the computers are popping out of it. Now they're old computers, as you can imagine, with five and a quarter drives and three and a half inch drives. But that three and a half inch drive that's popped up, can you put that three and a half disc in it? Not that one, but it does actually have... It is in there. I just haven't been able to get it out. There is actually... little disc in there. There is a little disc in there that I can't... It, I've got to restore this a little bit. It's had a bit of a hard life. But, yeah, the disc's actually still in there. Um, that you actually... You, you put it in, you close it, and then when you put it in, 
it opens, it simulates it opening up inside, and <laughs> yeah, the head comes nice, across. Nice, nice, nice. And then, yeah, the uh, how, how, I mean, most people don't, you know, your kids, they wouldn't even know what a CRT monitor is. Yeah. But this talks about how you're, um, Oh, a little. So this is a little tab yeah. in the side of the page where you pull, yeah. and it, so and it this actually reveals simulates the scan lines. Right. <laughs> so what uh, age? What age is uh, Cam going to be before he gets that? Probably next week. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that and book that book won't exist. The, this is my favorite week. one of the lot. What is that? Uh, a printer. Dot matrix printer that actually. I don't know if you'd be able to read that, but you can actually. It actually prints. Oh, is it actually printing something? <laughs> well, it's simulating printing, yeah, like right. it's got the, the print head that moves. And... Now, is it a 9-pin or a 24-pin? <laughs> uh, judging by that, I think it's a 24-pin parallel. It's got an actual... <laughs> nice work. That's, that, that'd, yeah, be, uh, that'd be one for the old Fart Geeks podcast. So, yeah, so this was made in, if I remember correctly, 1985. Um, and it was redistributed in about 87 by Penguin. Yeah, nice. So, nice hardcover. Uh, That's good. A pop-up. What's it say on the back? A pop-up guide to the personal computer. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent work. Well, look, let me finish uh, this story. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> let me finish. We that'll, do go. Teach you not, that'll teach me to not be on a podcast for three months. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good to see. Well, when you're, when you're on the show, that we do go off on tangents, but we always come back to the, and finish the story. <laughs> so, anyway, so we were talking. I don't know how we got onto the book. We were talking about cheap and nasty power supplies and power charges. But anyway, New South Wales Fair Trading has seized more than 10,000 items at one location, including unapproved and potentially dangerous USB phone chargers. Some of these chargers were counterfeits of Apple, LG, Samsung, Huawei, and Motorola, while others were not branded but styled on a branded product. Fair Trading said that the other items were labelled with false approval numbers. So that's what I don't get, is uh, you, you're going to counterfeit something, right? So your, your Apple charger or your phone, or whatever. You make it, don't you make it look so damn good, that, and that's the whole point, isn't it, that people don't know, they couldn't tell them apart, right? You couldn't tell them apart. But it seems that you know they can make them look so damn good with the mould and all this sort of stuff, but when it comes to putting on a, uh, an approval number... They get it wrong. Why would you just steal an approval number? Go and buy an original one, copy the approval number, and away you go. Like I don't get that part. We know what it's, CE stands for, don't you? Uh, I have. I don't know off the top of my head now. Chinese engineered. Oh, really? No, but that's what they think yeah. it does. That's why everything's got, everything's got CE stands for. I'll give you an example of actually a very good counterfeit. This is a, um, a DIY oscilloscope. So yes. you, you actually assemble it yourself, solder all the components onto the board, all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> now, DSO is actually the company who originally designed these, and their boards up here in this blank space have a big DSO logo on it and a serial number. Yeah. That logo and serial number was actually on the listing of the supposed photos of these units. Right. So I thought I was ordering Get... an actual DSO unit. Yeah, getting the right <laughs> When one. this unit turned up, it wasn't. <laughs> But it's it's like you know when they counterfeit the fifty dollar notes as well, like it'll it'll be the note you can tell the notes why they counterfeit because you look at the number and the number will be wrong or something like yeah. that. You think why wouldn't you just get a couple and, and copy the number? Like you know, like, you just don't understand. Look, it's like that, that's the that's where the the, the buck starts with the counterfeiter. They go, oh no, we respect the uh, approval numbers. We are not going to fake those. Now, Commissioner Rod Stowe, Stowe said some of the charges uh, in the shipment intercepted by Australian Border Force had inferior components and circuitry. And here's a, uh, once again, just a little mock-up of a genuine one and a counterfeit one. Yes, okay. All right. So, I'm glad we've uh, got that one out. Now, Will, what's been happening in your world? What have you been following this week? Um, nothing super interesting, to be honest. I've... Um... Uh, there's, there's a few things, but nothing that's actually... Uh, the one thing I have to admit that has t tickled my fancy is the new relaxed um, drone laws that they're, they're working on in Australia. Um, right. Traditionally, commercially, if you wanted to fly a drone for photography or anything like that, you need to have a license and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, but anyone will be able to fly a drone for profit in Australia later this year after the Air Safety Authority revealed it would relax aviation safety laws, cutting red tape and thousands of dollars from the cost of using drones. Um... 
the moves have been largely welcomed by the industry. Experts warn drones are already posing dangers to other... Supposedly posing dangers to other aircraft. I'm not quite sure how low these aircraft are flying. Yeah. Uh, as well as privacy and safety. And the authority admits it does not have people out there to investigate drone pilots breaking the law, blah, blah, blah. The Civilization Safety Authority will enact a new drone law on September 29th this year, removing the need for commercial drone pilots to hold an operator certificate and remote pilot license, as well as applying for the CASA each time they use it. I also have to admit at this say at this point, I absolutely hate the term drone. I can't stand it, but I'm only using because it it's written in the article. It's not something I use in well, what would you, speech. Well, how would you describe it? What do you use? Uh, quadcopter or hexcopter or whatever it actually is. Right, They're okay. not drones. They're manned. They're not drones. Yeah, um, the new laws only apply to new drones weighing less than two kilos. Um, however, rule out more advanced remote control. Well, the DJI inspires. Okay, so what they're saying is a, a standard basic drone that you fly with the remote is most of them are under two kilos, so most of them are going to be exempt. Um, the more sophisticated ones that. Uh, and so they don't say if it's two kilos, including payload, or just two kilos in general either. Because you can have some of the drones will carry DSLR cameras and things like that, so they're yeah. going to be. But the drone itself only weighs a couple hundred grams. Mm. Um, so but is, have you got a drone? Uh, yeah, I've got one. Second okay. shelf, third box. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so it's got a camera on it. It does. It's only. It's not a live feed one. It's just a recording one. I've. Um, it's a cheap and nasty one, but it's a good way to learn to fly them because you don't want to wreck an expensive one. Yeah, we'll try. Um, this is I've I've stripped it right down. Where's my camera? Um, I've taken all the guards off. I've taken all the plasticky stuff off. Everything off that's not required. Um, I put a camera on it, and I've put um, I've upgraded my batteries from the 500 milliamp that they came with. I've put 750 milliamp batteries in it. Oh. Um, it's I mean it's fine. It's like it's a fifty dollar drone. It does the job. It's good fun. The yeah. camera is crappy, but it's it's good fun. Um, what are those, takes the pictures you need. What do those ones cost that they race? Like, do you reckon? Well, the more you do, uh, the more you make yourself. So most of those are custom made. Um, you know, you're not going to get much change out of a couple of grand. And given that the the ones that the really high end ones that they use for professional filming, you know, the eight rotors, they'll carry, um, you know, a DSLR camera and a, and a 150mm lens. They've got gyroscopic, um, gimbal, gyroscopic gimbals. They've got full um, immersion, so you're not flying by looking at the drone. You're actually flying by looking through the screen. Yeah. Uh, yep. And they're seeing what it's sending back to you. Now, you're talking thousands and thousands of dollars for those. Mm. Those, uh, so. those races, I know I bring it up every week. I love them. I just, um, I think they're great. So I'd like, I'd like to go. I oh, wouldn't have to. I that. only watch. I, I mean, they're good fun, but I actually watch them to learn how to fly better. Hmm. Because I've flown RC choppers, I've flown RC planes, I've flown, I've driven a lot of RC cars, and the really weird part about a quadcopter or any of that style where you've got multiple rotor. Um, is it's actually a combination of all these different things that you've you've driven and flown over the years. They all come together. Yeah. Um, and it's a really weird amalgamation of all these different controls. It, to, the actual control isn't that special. Like it's only it's only a, uh, a standard f um, four axis or I guess eight axis control. It's it's got um, you know up and down, left and right, up and down, left and right. Mm, yeah, yeah. But it's how you do that, you know. Yes. And when you're watching these guys fly them, great. Now I've turned it on. Things probably going to take <laughs> off. Um, <laughs> Look out, Cam. <laughs> um, it's how these guys fly them, and they're on these wicked angles. And the thing that I find fascinating about watching these guys fly is this thing can be 500 meters in that direction. I can't even see mine at that distance. And yet these guys are going around cones. <laughs> yeah, well, they've got, they've got the things beaming back into their eyeballs, haven't they? Not all of them. Depends. Yeah, right. A lot of them don't. Yeah, a lot yeah, of them. Okay. Um, a lot of them. They just are on a stand and they just watch them go out into the horizon. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. <laughs> if well, mine gets more than about 20 metres away, I'll start freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, look, I was looking for a video. But, uh, look, we've seen, we've seen them before, so we'll move on. Uh, look, another one this week, LinkedIn. I think everyone's on LinkedIn these days. Has opened up an Asia-Pacific data centre to handle the growth volume of traffic. Now, it's opened up in Singapore, uh, worth a squillion, something like 2,000 square um meters or something now it's now this story here says linkedin's got 414 million members so including 7 million in australia which is part of the fastest growing age pacific region now between 2013 and 2015 the asia pacific membership apparently had more than doubled to 85 million now my comment on that would be well it wouldn't surprise me because it seems that LinkedIn's been scraping Facebook and just putting up blank profiles. Um, do you find that, Will? Like you, you find that there's new friend requests and or, or there's people that you know, but the LinkedIn profile's just empty. There's nothing there. It's just a shell. And you go, where that? Where they get that name from? These people obviously haven't signed up. So, um, so to me, that's where they they've doubled their their well, user I've base. Well, I've all and, mine. Yeah, every every one of my Facebook contacts has suddenly become involved in LinkedIn, even though most people haven't even heard of it. Yeah, so that's so you reckon they might be scraping the Facebook? Oh, well, they'd be stupid not to. I mean, well, given that a lot of people would sign I know I signed up with my Facebook account, so it's going to have access to all my friends. Yeah, well, that's right. Oh, yeah, be, that's right. Oh, it's a, a smart move on their part, but I suppose they're, you know, it's just someone's justifying their job, aren't they? Going, oh, we've doubled our user base, but yeah, that's really? Right. <laughs> really? Yeah, I don't know about that. But anyway, so. Let's uh, let's hope that the new servers in Singapore give us give us a faster faster load time. Now this is probably you. This next story, Will. Are you one of the people with a machine still running XP? Mm, yes. What are you a usable machine? Two. Or? I got two two machines actually. And what do you boot them up quite regularly? Yeah, one's my media center. Ah, oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, and one's um, my workshop. System. Wasn't it hard to get? Oh, what do you use as a media software? The Windows or Windows Media Center or something? No, else? just XP, just XP with Kobe. All oh, right, yeah, I've been I've been looking into Kobe as you know, and uh, I might get one of those little Kobe boxes just for laughs. See how it, see how it <laughs> runs. <laughs> see how it runs. They're on eBay for about hundred bucks, and um, I know. Yeah, that's right. Well, with as a, I said, with I use it on my Pi, and it works quite fine on that. You know, on the on the Raspberry Pi, it works all right. So. Yeah, yeah, I don't have. Time oh, there's to... another pro. There's another project I got. I did <laughs> last weekend. It's I just... put. Uh, I can see the whole shelf full of projects. I put <laughs> um, immersion glasses on my Raspberry Pi. And what does that do? So I don't need a monitor or anything. It's all. Oh, I'll get stuff. It's all built in there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I use my phone. I use my phone for the keyboard and mouse so I can run the Pi to use whatever program I'm doing at the time, my 3D printer or whatever. Right. I've got immersion glasses for my screen and I use that power pack I showed you before to power the whole thing. Can you get the those immersion glasses to do anything? Like, say, hook up to your Windows 10? Yep. Where you do can you, do whatever. Yeah, right. Where do you get them? Mine actually, eBay? Mine actually, well, mine came with a controller board that I didn't need for the Pi because the Pi puts an AV signal out, but... This controller board lets you tap it into basically any signal you wish. Yeah, nice. Full of projects, Will. Full of projects. Well, anyway, 11% of machines are still running Windows XP out, out there. So XP's been gone, done and dusted. No more support for two years, uh, two years ago. And, uh, yeah, no further updates. So 11% of machines are still kicking along. Yeah. You just can't believe it. Wouldn't surprise it. me. I mean... You've oh, got to think how many... I mean, well, look at um, Centrelink. They're still using dumb terminals with XP on them. So, I mean, there's going to be a lot of dumb terminals out there that have it on it. And I think there's a lot of uh, computers like that are like key, the key, using the kiosk version. Yeah, the kiosk, um, the, the embedded stuff. Yeah, so that's still out there, but... But I'll, I'll tell you, like you... a lot of tablets, a lot of a lot of the um, tablets you buy on eBay, the Windows tablets, still have XP on them. Well, IE, what that stopped at IE eight, something like that for. Oh, no. Yeah, and I think I also read that Google Chrome they're going to stop supporting uh, the XP as well. So I don't know what's going to happen there. They'll just what they just stop at the last version and yeah, move on. All right, what else? Are we oh, what's happened there? Huh. Now, 
Oh, actually, I just thought of something that's going to be quite difficult to do. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the audio stopped recording on the Mac. The Mac had a little spaz attack just before. And I'm just thinking, I've got to match that audio and video up, so that's going to be hard. Don't hang, don't ha- yeah, don't hang for the video, folks. It's uh, <laughs> yeah, it might be a while. Uh, now, online scams. They're targeting Apple customers. Uh, you know, they used to sit high and mighty, didn't they? Old Apple people saying we don't get scammed. I don't need a virus scanner. Nobody writes a virus for our software. That's right, but they are getting <laughs> scammed. The text yep. text messages, people they're sending these scammers are sending text messages out to the smartphones claiming their Apple ID accounts were going to expire. The message encouraged people to visit a fake website which looked pretty good. Pretty much like the Apple ID sign-in and all this sort of stuff. So they encourage you to go there where you enter your account information. So the solution is to avoid from doing this is to avoid clicking on links in emails because they might take you somewhere fishy. Instead, go to the website directly and log in that way. So that's a good idea. Look, well, I've got something today that popped up on my screen. Very, very uh, suspicious. I was doing just what I was doing, you know, as you do on your computer. And this little thing popped up and it says, oh, trying to copy file A to file B, but it already exists. You know, that dialogue box and already exists. What do you want to do? You know, copy, replace or whatever. And I thought, and I looked at the file name and everything. I thought, I'm not even copying anything. I didn't try to copy anything. So I'm wondering if this has come through as some sort of, you know, like some scam. You go, okay. And behind the OK button is an install install a, a problem software. Yep. But uh, yeah, so yeah, it's even what they're actually doing now. It's even more annoying than that is they make it do it no matter what button you press. They're non-exitable applications. Well, so you think that that might have been a tr- a, a true attempt on yep, me? I'd say so. Yeah. Right. Well, I clicked the cross, so I got rid of it, and it, nothing encrypted, so I'm still good to go. Now the a second, yeah, but Skype hasn't worked all night. <laughs> true, true. Maybe it maybe it encrypted something to Skype. A uh, <laughs> second scam was uh, disguised as an update to Adobe Flash. Oh, that thing has got so many problems, and I can't believe it's mm. still going. Steve Jobs, he was right to kill that thing off for Apple, or for the iOS anyway. Uh, the so that this Adobe Flash encouraged victims to install a new version of the software. Now, blogger Graham Cluley. He's, he's pretty cluey, old Graham Cluely. The best advice for many users was to was uh, maybe to ensure that you have configured Adobe Flash Play to automatically update itself. Now, OSX operating system does not have a safeguard enabled by default that prevents people... In, oh, it does have a, a safeguard by default, that's right. So if you try and install something that's outside of the, I think, the, the App Store, I think OSX got an App Store now, uh, it won't let you... So in sort of written by unknown developers, they've so got to be a known developer. So, yeah, look, I've flashed a picture up there of the the Apple site. It looks pretty good. Uh, a young lady, by the look of it, sitting there, the Apple Watch on. You know, playing with her iPhone, Apple ID. It's all. It's very Apple-like. It's almost just a copy, isn't it? It's just almost a copy. There'd probably be something on there, something I didn't like. The the uh, the website serial number. They probably got that wrong. They didn't <laughs> copy everything except the serial number. Yeah, but anyway, that's what's happening there. Yeah, all right. Did you have anything, Will? Or you want me to keep going? Yeah. So we know this uh, last week was it the week before that? Um, what was that guy's name? That twenty-seven-year-old engineer, uh, John Savasky, or whatever his name was. He downloaded the um, one terabyte. Oh, yep. Um, of data from Telstra. Yeah. Yeah. So Chelsea reached out to him after discussions and offered him a job for a day. Um, they <laughs> was said, that for a day? Yeah. We invited him to help us test our upcoming one gigabit per second mobile broadband hotspot before we make it available to our customers. Whoopie do. <clears throat> so this is more of a, this is actually quite smart by Telstra because this guy's reading the media and is known for downloading huge amounts of data. So Telstra, okay, well, we're rolling out a one gigabit a second connection. Um, for mobile, so hey, why don't you test it out for us? Um, so the device will be the first that's going in the world and should be capable of speeds around three times faster than the current phone. Um, we want to make sure our customers have the best possible experience, so customers happy, blah, 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 blah. Um, it came two days just after Mr. Savarsky, 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 
Mr. S. Yeah. Um, what's his name? John. It came two days after John said, I don't think I'll ever work for them. Too much red tape and silly internal politics that don't allow any real work to be done. <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, what, what, like downloading Game of Thrones? <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? So they gave me a fairly technical overview of the product. Uh, they mentioned they want me to get out the test speeds, try and push it to the limit and see if I can break it. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. But that aside, um, I think it's going to be really good um, to this if this new technology rolls out. Well, if, well, I don't know if it's going to be really good. It's going to be really interesting to see what what happens. Um, it's all fine and dandy to have a connection capable of the gigabit, but if your backbone still can't handle it, that's right. It doesn't matter how fast the connection is if you can't leave the the, the you know that tower that that blocks on. If you can't get out of that block, it doesn't yeah. matter <laughs> you yeah. know how good your connection speed is. Yeah, well, that's right. So I wonder what he downloaded. Well, is there a day? I can't believe is there a day. Did he get paid for that? No, probably not. Where's probably not. Would you? Here, come here and test an unlimited data for a day. Oh, Are you going to pay me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'd be bothered. I'd probably, like, why help someone out? You'd I'd take my do. laptop in and tether it to my phone and go bonkers. Yeah, but what are you going to download? That's the thing. The what? internet? <laughs> Start at A and go yeah, to Z. <laughs> Just type in to Google, how do I download the internet and go from there? <laughs> yeah. I, wonder, I wonder, I wonder, you wouldn't never be, you would never know, but I just wonder how much, say, if you wanted to add up all the server space taken up in the world that's hooked up to the internet, how much that would be. That'd be Google's kind of done a rough calculation. Right. Um, how much data does the internet... I did look it up um, once. It was a rolling um, a rolling total last time I checked. Um, it says, they say there's about... Estimates are, say, the, between Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Facebook... Estimates are the big four store 1,200 petabytes, which is 1.2 million terabytes. And that's yeah. just between the big four. What's so. that? 1.2 million terabytes. Yeah, look, you, you would probably think there'd be more than that more than that in hard drives out there, wouldn't you? I know they're not all connected up to the internet, but, um, yeah, you can't believe, like, in the big data centers, like, that one I just had up on the screen. Let's see if I can get that back. That it's uh, it's just all hard drives. You think it'd be mm. some big sort of tape system or some some sort of wacky do storage way of storing stuff, but it's just just wall to wall hard well, drives, pretty much. A lot of it's not even hard drives now. A lot of it's all solid state memory. Yeah, well, it's all. Re yeah. It's basically massive big RAM cache banks. Because the hard drives are too slow. Yes. So it's yeah. all they, the hard drives are literally only there to do data backups. The data is all stored in RAM. Well, I suppose yeah. Well, that makes it faster, doesn't it? But uh, yeah, that's that's a lot of data. Now tell me, I mean, Will. Sorry. You're right. I was going to say. Now tell me uh, what's going on with Obsidian Loft and the old fart geeks. Are we still in production. Yeah, it's just been, uh, at the moment, of City Lost on kind of a hiatus because Minecraft hasn't really done much at the moment. Um, it's settled down and and everything. Um, Old Fart Geeks, we actually want to do more, but just the two of us at the moment, we're out of, uh, out of ideas. So if anybody's got ideas or requests or wants to be on it or, you know, we're waiting for Glenn to get organized, but, you know, he doesn't have to use Skype. No, um, <laughs> I don't. I don't know how to hook up the, to the internet. <laughs> oh, so, so but yeah, I mean, they're they're still they're not dead projects. Um, they're just currently in hiatus until until we either can get motivated or we can get some form of input from other people to you know see what people want. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, if you've got something that you'd like Will and Jace to talk about on Old Fart Geeks, like I don't know, um, what's something really old? Do you remember the eight and a half inch disc? disc Discs are they eight and a halfs? Eight and a half. So no, what they nine? Nine were they? The one nine inch, I think. The ones that IBM used to use. Yeah, the real big ones. Yeah, I yeah. think they were nine inch. Um, Woolworths used to use them even not that long ago, up and fifteen years ago. Woolworths are still using them for their data backups. Oh yeah, 
safe. <laughs> because I did my, I did work experience. It'd be fifteen, yeah, about fifteen, seventeen years ago. I did work experience at IBM, and uh, I had to go to Woolworths head office in Sydney to clean all their drives because it was that every three months they got their drive service to keep their discs uh, backed up. Let's see if I can find a picture of a nine inch. <laughs> <laughs> a nine inch disk drive. Yeah, type in time in type in nine inches into Google and see what happens to you. No, I, I purposely put disk disk after it. Do you know why it's spelled back in the old days when they were floppy disks, they were spelt with a K rather than a C. Yeah, why? I don't know why. Well, back but... in the day when they were a disk, the diskette was the actual thing and disc was an abbreviation of diskette so that's why it was spelt with a k as opposed to a disc which is spelt mm. with a c which is like a cd yes yeah well there's there's a look i don't look I don't, that's five and a quarter yeah there's those big eight inch yeah eight inch eight five inch? and a quarter and three and a half inch i knew that something like that but those discs where are they there's a picture of some discs they're um yeah i remember they were being huge they were just huge I don't know what the data was on them. I can't remember. They weren't very big. It wasn't much. I think it was less than a five and a quarter, I think. I think it was. Well, yeah, well, a five and a quarter was less than a 1.4, so... I'm going to see how much... Oh, what's all that? How much does a nine-inch disc hold? Um, Um, That's probably not the right question (laughs) for Google. Here we go. History of the data disc drives. First floppy drives developed in the 1960s were eight-inch. Uh, they became commercially available in 71 and sold separately in 72. Um, it doesn't actually say top 10 men of the... Then 76 was introduced, the first five and a quarter. Um, but it doesn't have five and a quarter inch format, displaced the eight inch. Uh, then in 94, the 1.2 dual sided floppy was introduced using the... 720k double densities at three and a half, but it doesn't say the data that they used to sell. No, you'd probably have to. There would, there would be there somewhere old computers. Here we go. This one, this this little side here might have it. In 1971, IBM introduced the eight-inch floppy disk. Capacity was a hundred k. There you go. A hundred k. Then in 1976. The five and a quarter came out at a hundred k, but eventually reaching one point two megabytes. Wowzers! Huge. I didn't realize they were hundred. I knew they were seven twenty. I didn't realize they were. They went to or six forty rather. I didn't realize they were hundred k. No, they did get. They were seven twenty. I think. I think I remember them as seven twenty. Was it seven twenty than one point? No, wasn't it six forty than one point two? And the three and a half was seven twenty and one point four. Oh, you might be right. No, because okay. the five and a quarter... How long ago that was? <laughs> yeah, the five and a quarter started... I remember them being 360, I think. Or was it 360 than 720? Yeah, that might have been it. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Yeah, because 360, then he cut a notch in the other side to make them 720. Yeah, that's right. And do you remember, I don't know, because uh, we used to have the, you know, the Apple computer down at the public libraries, and it was, a, I don't know if it was a, a myth or whatever, but... You bought your your single sided disc. You cut the notch out and make it double sided, but you got banned from the computer if you did that. Yeah, because, really? Yeah, because they're saying because they're saying well, if you use the other side, it's like the other side's like it's not pro- a proper disc. It'll wreck the drive. But it looked. Well, right that was the me. difference between an expensive one and a cheap one. Here we go. So in nineteen seventy one, the first eight inch was a IBM twenty three FD. It was read only, and it was eighty k. And then read only. It, yeah, then in 72, it was 175K. Um, and then in 1973, it became 237K. And then in 1976, it became 500K. And then the five and a quarter came out in 76 as an 87.5K. And that and that eventually got updated to 980, then 1.2. And then the five and a quarter double densities were 360 or 800. Uh, the Apple II disc pre DOS was 113, right up to the 3 inch, which is 3, yeah, so the 3 inch was 360, 
Um, and look. then 720, the double sided. So yeah. Have a look at the accessories you could get. You could get you could get the 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 file. What do they call those expandable files? It looks like. Right. Right a file over there. Put your discs in. Lovely. <laughs> Why are we talking about discs anyway? All right. Let's um. Let's get. Oh, that's <laughs> you <right>. started it. <laughs> That's right, we got on the old Fart Geeks podcast. Well, look, that's on the iTunes. Go and check that out. It hasn't had an episode for a little while, but uh, there's some old episodes there. And uh, now this ransomware, it's all over the show. Petya, P-E-T-Y-A, ransomware encryption system cracked. So if you had the Petya ransomware on your computer, you can now crack it. Now, unidentified programmer, he's produced a tool. What a champion. That exploits the shortfalls in the way that the malware encrypts a file that allows Windows to start up. It notes on code. It put notes on the uh, on GitHub, which is a code sharing site. He said he'd produced a key generator to help his father-in-law unlock his Petya encrypted computer. So, uh, yeah, I've never had I've never had ransomware. I've seen it. I've I've dealt with it on other people's computers, but I've never had it on mine. Thank goodness. Uh, the this Petya demands a point nine of a Bitcoin, and uh, hmm, it, isn't that like? That's like 500 bucks, isn't it? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, 500, 600. So this is, this patch had distributed itself. And look, I had another, yeah, talk about things. I've got another strange email today. And and talk about things starting to happen. It 552 was, Australian dollars. Yeah, right. Well, go to the show notes, follow the story, and you might be able to find a link if you've got that patch to get rid of it. So, um, yeah, I was going to, I was telling a story and I forgot now. Where I was Sorry. going with it. That's all right. What was I going to do with that? No, nah, I don't know. Next. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll think about it later. Oh, that was it. That was all my stories. All right. Have you got any stories, Will? Yeah. So, you know these uh, high-speed dryers that are finding their way into urinals? Every, uh, in, in the urinals? urinals? Into toilets that look like urinals is what I was trying to say. You know, ones where you put your hands down in them. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's what they look like urinals. You can see why I got confused. Mm. Um, you might want to think twice next time before you use them. The Dyson Airblade, of course, because who else would make something so stupid except Dyson? Um, you, know spreads... it's for your, you know it's for your hands. Dry your hands. I don't look that closely. Um, <laughs> Dyson Airblade hand dryers spread 60 times more germs than standard air dryers and 1,300 times more germs than paper towels. Oh, dear, oh, dear. The research shows Dyson has 690 kilometer hour blasts of air that are capable of spreading viruses up to three meters across the bathroom. They, they should have stuck to floppy disks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you know, Dyson always makes useless, expensive products, but here's another example of it that obviously shows no testing. The old ones, um, the old standard ones that blow the air down, yeah. Um, spread just over 75 centimetres and hand towels just 25 centimetres. So, yeah, basically, if you're standing... Well, you might as well be standing at the urinal washing your hands for that, all that matters. It ain't going to make any difference. No, well, that's right. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I don't, look, yeah, why, why... I think paper's always probably better. Paper's, paper's good. They say also, like, getting off the track, but they say that uh, not wiping your hands is just as bad. They say, like, if your hands are wet, if you leave the toilet with wet hands, that's just as bad as not washing them for some reason. I don't know. Only for the person who grabs the doorknob after you've walked out. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe if you grab the doorknob with wet hands, maybe germs fall onto your hand easier. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? But I, I always like... I, don't know. I like paper. I prefer paper. All right. Well, yeah, that's it, exactly. So I just thought that was an interesting little article. It was just, you know, everybody... Right, everyone ra- you know raves about how great Dyson products are, but they're not really. I mean, their vacuum cleaners are they suck. second. This well, they don't suck. That's the problem. <laughs> um, they're second rate at best. You know, the things like the Shark uh, Liftaway Navigator and things like that are a far better unit, and they're cheaper. Hmm. Um, and have you seen that Dyson fanless blade thing? Yeah, the bladeless... s- yes, the fan. Yeah. Yes, I'm that. Yeah, it blows air from around the rims or something. That's because that's where you want your air blown from. <laughs> I did say rim. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. There's some some strange things coming out. Like, so you can put your hand in it, I guess. And it, it, yeah, uh, it's got it. The theory is the fan is underneath that cylindrical chamber, and it blows enough air oh, to circulate right. around the dome. But it works on the theory. Have you ever got a garbage bag and sort of just blown into the garbage bag from a great distance, and it inflates the bag? Whereas no. if you try to blow into it, like here, you can't. But if you hold it way out here and blow into it, as you blow into it, it accumulates other air and, and right. puts in with it. Okay. That's so right. it works on the same principle as that. The problem is it doesn't really work. Mm. <laughs> in, it's a probably okay if you just want to move air around a room. But if you actually want to sit in front of a fan and be cooled by it, does they, they, they don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I bought a, uh, uh, not down here anymore, but it's a, it's one of those, just an upright, um, not even pedestal sure. fans. No, it's not a pedestal. It's just an upright fan and it, it's, it's a, it's a cylinder. It's probably about, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and they just turn around like that and, uh, yep. it's great. I, I think it's great. It's, it's not as sort of in your face as a pedestal fan and it just sits in the corner and, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's lovely. The good, the good old pedestal fans. Yeah. Best thing in the world for blowing uh, air over your microphone. Yeah, that looked like your pedestal fan was on a camera tripod. That's that's the camera tripod behind the pedestal fan. Oh, yes, of course. Now, <laughs> now, is it that hot where you are that you've got the fan on? Yeah. Yeah, right. It's not too, cold. Yeah. It's not too hot down here today. The... The ambient temperature here is, um, I think it's about 29 degrees. Yeah, right. That's pretty good. Pretty high. <laughs> All right. Now, um, look, you can uh, get us on the website if you want. It's uh, aussietechheads.com.au forward slash podcast. Look, you can get us on the Twitter. And I did set up this uh, Wirecast today so it would take Twitter feeds. So I'm guessing that if there was any anything that was tweeted to... During, the- yeah. During your live stream. At Aussie Tech uh, I don't know if you've got Twitter, Will. Do you want to give it a shot? We'll see if it works. Oh, I can do a Twitter, a tweet. I can do that. All right, if you can do that, and I'll keep talking about it. And we'll see what happens. Let's see if it comes up. Uh, yes, yeah, so, ah, oh, the new technology. It's wonderful, isn't it? So we might as well... Wow, we... it's been that long since I've used Twitter. I have to actually sign in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, look, let me tell you about the other podcasts that you can't do without. One of them is the Aussie Tech Security. There's another episode, hopefully, this week, like like tomorrow, hopefully. And uh, we'll see. I'm not even sure what we're going to talk about, but I'm sure Roger will come up with something. And don't forget the Aussie Mac Zone, Garth and Michael. They're always fingers on the pulse there when it comes to the, the Mac OS X and iOS devices, for sure. Uh, Michael rode away to Apple or something for something. I was in the other show. I can't remember what it was for now. And got responses back, and they're following him up, saying, "Yeah, that's a good idea." And so he's right into it. He is right into it. So he loves it. Um, yeah. So that's those. Look, uh, the Twitter is at Aussie Tech Edge. You can follow Will at. Well, he's not even on Twitter. He doesn't sign in. Yeah. So. Uh, well, I guess through my phone. I just don't have my phone here. Uh, it's at Mister Tomkinson. That's right. I would have remembered Will. And apparently it doesn't work because, uh, well, your tw- the Twitter thing doesn't work because the tweeted you and it doesn't come up. So Ah, well, that don't work then, does it? That's another thing we've got to work out. <laughs> well, I put, I put it in there. Look, let me home time lot, timeline. Sure you did. Yeah, home at feed type, home timeline. Did you go at Aussie Tech Eds? Yeah, I guess yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, that's something else we're going to have to figure out. <laughs> oh, it's all this stuff. Now, look, uh, that's about it. I think that, that's about it. That'll do you, will it, Will? Or you got more? I've got plenty more, but we're probably running long, so because we tend to do that. Yeah, oh, we're not too bad, but like, if you've got one more, we can squeeze one more in. And um, There's a few things. One I'll just quickly mention. It's it's a long-winded article, but uh, it t- to people tend to over, overlook this, especially with laptops and smartphones these days. Um, normally, when you finish your laptop, you just shut the lid, go to wherever you're going, open it back up, yep. whatever. You really do need to restart devices, tablets, laptops, PCs um, at least once a week. Every three or four days, ideally, but at least once a week. The the way that they're they're written, uh, the programs are written, they don't necessarily clear themselves out. I'm only, and this is, comes to mind because um, this article I was reading just talks about how a lot of people take their computers in, pay good money to get their computer serviced, and there's actually nothing wrong with it. They just haven't restarted it for such a long mm. period of time. So. Um, there's also an app that I use called um, Atomware. Um, yeah, Atom, 
Atom, no, that's not Atom. Atomware, A L O M, I think it oh, is. Oh, that one. Oh, geez. I, there's one that I use uh, called. A- uh, I forget is that. Is it Alamware? I can't think of it. It's, it's, it's Alamware Reset or something like that. Yeah, Alamware.com. Um, and it basically simulates a restart. It's not quite as good, but it means it only takes 10 seconds instead of, you oh. know, a minute. So. Oh, look. If you put it, look, my Windows 10 with an SSD, it would be, it wouldn't take. It wouldn't take 15 seconds to boot. My it's very into, yeah, my, into the username. It's very my fast. um my BIOS and post and RAID controller and everything takes about 30 seconds, and the actual boot up <laughs> only takes about 10. But everything else takes the time. Can't you mute all that stuff? It is. It's all on its quickest settings. Yeah, right. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. So what what are, what are you running there? You still got that Intel machine? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I'm still running this. I um, I haven't needed to upgrade. It's still heaps powerful for what I'm using. Yeah. Um, yeah. but I'm sure when my mate upgrades his system, I'll jump onto the new one because you know why not? <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. That's right. Yeah, look, it's, I'm st- um, I'm still doing what is it? An, an i7, two and a half or something? Yeah, this is an i7 3770. Uh, I'm running at three and a half, overclocked to three point eight, sixteen gig of RAM. Um, I had 32 in it, but I had to lend a mate 16 because his died. So I normally have 32 gig around. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, it's got it's got a 512 meg, 512 meg, 512 gig um, SSD. Yes, nice. For the primary, and then two 512 gig rated SSDs for my video recording. Oh, yeah, nice. So, yeah. so it works well. Four two gigabyte graphics cards, hmm. water cooling, you know, all the usual. Nice, good. Yeah, mine's been going good. Uh, look, mine, I've actually only had to clean it out once. I had to blow the dust out of the fans. It started overheating every two seconds. I'm bad due to do that. Yeah. yeah. You just use an air compressor? Yeah. Yeah, best way. I'll tell you, if there Take is a... Take the time up. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> there is a... Um... Oh, I can't find it. There's air in a can, which you can buy. Oh, that's... that. Yeah, how much is that? Which, yeah, that's the problem. If you don't have an air compressor and you only want to do it once every six months, um, it's not too bad. I'm just trying to find it, but um, it's it's fine. But look, you can use it, but you need to use it with a paintbrush to get in around the fans and everything to get the paintbrush, mm-hmm. dislodge it, and then use the can to actually just blow the, the final dust out of it because by itself, it doesn't really do much. A word of warning with that, though, because the what it contains um it basically don't shake it while you're spraying it or don't spray it upside down because you will spray out the liquid which boils at like minus i don't know 100 degrees or something so it's will instantly give you you know it'll actually burn Mm. it'll give you frost burn instantly it's really really cold uh it's the same stuff that they use they actually use it to burn off um sunspots and stuff like that oh wow all right i'll I'll use it for some stuff (laughs) <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Well, I think that that will do us this week, because the Mac just had another little spaz attack. So this has <laughs> been a week or a night. This episode has been fraught with so many issues you would not believe. So if, if you guys are listening to this and it's nice and coherent, <laughs> uh, you know that I, I I performed a miracle. See this stuff here: compressed air in a can. Good stuff. Spray it this way. That's okay. Spray it this way. No good. Frostbite. Oh, yeah, it doesn't come out. Yeah, but look, uh, look, if you want my tip, I know Will said use a paintbrush. I don't. I wouldn't put any brush in there, really. <laughs> no, on like, your fans. On your fans oh, yeah. and stuff like that, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, in your fan, yeah. Look, I know you can get nylon brushes that you can you can scrape or, or brush the circuitry. Uh, yeah. But, but I've just found with the, with the fans, oh, try and get an air compressor. That's if you're using a compressor, it's easy. But mm. don't forget, too, if you can... You can quite happily use a horsehair brush or an iron brush on your board. Just make sure you leave the power cord plugged into it, the system out. Mm. And if you use a vacuum cleaner, huh, a Dyson, <laughs> if you use a vacuum cleaner, uh, try not to touch anything with the metal sucker rod thing and you'll be right. The other thing is too, if you are blowing the fans out, hold the fans. Don't let them free spin because it will actually overspin the fans and it will damage mm. them. I just think like from the, say the PSU, I just stick a... A screwdriver or pencil something. or something. Yeah. yeah, just through to stop it from circling. Uh, in the on the CPU. You won't use a paintbrush, but you'll stick a screwdriver through your power supply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll do a paintbrush in the power supply, <laughs> but um, and don't take the power supplies apart. Naughty, naughty. 
They will still shock Why? you. Well, they still shock you. Oh, here we go. Will's got one third shelf, uh, fourth container. Oh. <laughs> For some reason, I put the cover back on it. I don't know why I did that. Fifth compartment. <laughs> oh, look, Will. I can see that you are going to be in strife when Cam starts crawling. <laughs> you are going to be. There's going to be a lock on this door, I'm sure of it. Oh, that you're going to have to. You'll get into everything. You'll tell you if there's any power in that power supply. Well, You're... actually, I'll tell you something I found very interesting on eBay the other day. Um, they have these, if you want a cheap workshop power supply, they have these adapters. And these, if you've got an old computer power supply, these actually plug into into the adapter. Um, they've got an on-off switch on them, and they give you a 12-volt, a 5-volt, and a 3-volt rail. So it's a very good way to get a, a multi-volt power supply cheaply. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay, cool. Another good tip from Will. You've got four good tips, aren't you, Will? Full of something. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we are getting out of here now and uh, and I'll, I'll, to uh, edit this monstrosity of an episode. So, all right, so, so uh, thanks for downloading. And, uh, yeah, we, we hopefully, <laughs> if I don't have a stress attack after this one, we'll be back next week with some more. Don't forget the Aussie Tech Security and the Aussie Tech Radio. Um, it's uh, going great guns, that little Aussie Tech Radio. It's great. All right, Will, thanks for coming in. Good to see you again. No worries, mate. I'll try might... and get back again. Yeah, we might see you again soon. I think we got Eric might be back next week. He's crook this week. And, um, yeah, and whoever else might want to uh, join us, we'll do a bit of a, a hunt around and see who, who we can find around the traps. All right. Thanks, Will. We'll see you right, next week. We'll see you guys next week too. All right. Cheers for now. Bye. Bye. Bye.